Rosina Fisher and I'm here with Mission is Mobile University with Franklin Culver and with Lawrence Funderburk, who we're so glad to have you with us Amen. today. And in our last segment, we were talking about Building Better Boys, the all boys clinic that's gonna be starting soon. So you wanna make sure to check the website, which is missionismobileuniversity.com. And we'll have the dates listed there. So if you have a boy who you want him to one day turn into a man, uh, I, you need to get him to that clinic. So make sure you do check that out. I wanted to start this segment by quoting Dietrich Bonhoeffer, one of my favorite fathers of the faith. Mm -hmm. Speak about fathers, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We're yes. talking about Derek Prince in the last mm -hmm. segment. Mm -hmm. uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer always had a heart for the next generation. He thought that was the whole purpose of ministry was to pass the torch, to pass the baton to the next generation. Mm, absolutely. Uh, he said, one act of obedience is worth a hundred sermons. Mm. And I just think that's so important because mm. we were talking about how our boys, they've heard too many sermons, yeah. way yeah. too many sermons, yeah. and they haven't had enough examples mm, of good. godly men. And if they just had mm. some examples of a godly man, they could be turning into the men they're supposed to become. Absolutely. So the, I'm so excited about this clinic uh, because for us to send people on mission trips or for us to give all our money to missions, but miss it here at home. That's good. If we That's miss good. it here at home, we have just cut off our legs just mm. by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we need to build better boys. We mm -hmm. also need the all beauties clinic. We need to build women out of girls. Girls need to give up their girlish ways and learn how to be women of God. So I'm so excited about what you guys are going to be doing. Mm -hmm. So in future episodes, we'll be in, uh, in, uh, what do you? What is your nickname? What do you call him? Mr. Fundy. Mr. Fundy. Mr. Fundy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fundy's basement doing this clinic. So I'm really looking forward to it. So let's talk about. Uh, we were saying what is missing in building better boys today. We talked about fatherlessness in our last episode. Talk to me about systematic religious training. Is there systematic religious training for boys in the church? In the black church specifically, mm -hmm. is that something that is done? Because we know that's important. That's very important. Well, see, there's actually three steps. <clears throat> One is the uh, Catholic, two are the Jewish community, and then three is your Protestant. Mm -hmm. So one has about 300 hours of religious training annually, the other one about 248 hours of religious training annually, then the Protestant, which comprise of your Methodist, Baptist, uh, Pentecostals, whatever, Protestants, non-denominational Protestant, right? That group carries about 52 hours of religious training. Those hours can be reduced to 17 hours when you consider the teacher coming late, when you consider the lesson plan not well prepared, when you consider the teacher not showing up. So in the Protestant church, there's about 17 hours annually. That's every other three Sundays our kids are being trained. Okay, now, uh, if there's no uh, systematic training, I promise you there will be no systematic behavior. Mm. And if there's no behavior, you're going to have a, a, a society of enemy, which is lawlessness. And that's what we are today. Right. So we have to get back to having a, a viable plan. And we just can't just teach something. It has to be something that's relevant mm. to our children. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar, they studied the time that's good. and they mm. knew what Israel were to do. So as fathers, as mentors, our job is to study our society, to study not just the black community. We are to study boys in general. We are to right. study our young people. And as we study them, then we are to respond uh, according to God's word. That's the only thing. Uh, Psalms 119 says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? He answers this question by saying, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. This is how young men get clean, is by taking heed to God's word. Mm. Uh, Mr. Fundy, hey, that's, I mean, that's an excellent, excellent commentary. And you're exactly right. You're talking about the sons of Issachar. I think really um, we got to be able to, to be relevant, speak the language to these young people without okay. compromising the integrity okay. of the gospel. Because yes. so many people yeah. try to be cool with that's kids. No, 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 no. Like my kids. That's no, no, good. we're not friends. Mm -hmm. I'm your parent. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm going to love you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to care for you. Mm -hmm. But I think with mm -hmm. a lot of young people today, they need some authentic relationships, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. they want people, don't be phony, mm -hmm. be authentic, be real, mm -hmm. but also <clears throat> you got to hold them accountable yes, because yes, kids yes. need guardrails. Right, right, right. They need guardrails, right, right. right? And when you don't have that, mm -hmm. what are you left with? Who's going to mm -hmm. really um, mold you and shape you? They don't feel Our safe. Our TV? Mm -hmm. 
uh, social media, mm -hmm. gangs, mm -hmm. drug Absolutely. dealers. Yeah. I mean, somebody's going to step in. Our Absolutely. educational system, I'm mm -hmm. talking about not, not, mm -hmm. not, not Christian-based. Mm -hmm. So we need some type of guardrail system, mm -hmm. and I think that's the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. Kids want that, and when you give them too much latitude, mm -hmm. it's actually not a good thing. Absolutely. Right? Right. We, need, we, need, we need that foundation, which he's mm -hmm. talking about. You need a system, need a system in place in so place. they can say, this is the way. This is the way. Follow it. Walk exactly you right. in it. <laughs> Walk you. you know, I want to say this, too, is that I, now I just met Mr. Fundy today, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I can tell you, that according to Franklin, he's just as amazing as, as Franklin is. So Absolutely. Franklin, let me just tell you what, if you have systematic religious training That's from a good. phony you will do more to harm the development of that boy. The key is to get fathers. These are fathers that are men of integrity. I've been to India with Franklin. I've watched his life. I've watched his marriage. I've watched how he raises his kids. And this is the type of person that you want to train your boy. There's no hidden addiction in the closet. Uh, there's a financial stability. He's provided well for his family, especially Mr. Fundy is a master at how to manage <laughs> finances. So it's so important not just to give them training. Like right. anyone can go out and buy a curriculum. That's good. That's good. Anyone can say, Very we're going to do this Sunday school program. Mm -hmm. uh, but it will actually Very be good. worthless and turn people away from maturing if it isn't given to them by a father. God meant for the men of God to be That's raised great. up to that. be fathers. That's and consistent. even though you are only two, <clears throat> you true. can be fathers yeah. to thousands yeah. of of boys mm -hmm. that need you. If they don't have a dad who is a great example, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, I was just talking to a friend the other day and her son went in and looked in her father's drawer and found stuff in that bedroom drawer Amazing. that messed that kid up. That kid is probably messed up, you know, without the help of the Lord, he'll be messed up for decades They're just good. from what he found in that drawer. So, and, but the father claimed to be a Christian. Wow. Wow. Well, so wow. in other words, he could That's go good. to all the Sunday school in the I world. He could have a, 2,000 hours of religious education, <laughs> but without the examples that you that. guys bring, he'll be handicapped. Well, he, in a mixed signals, let me just say <clears throat> on that <throat> is, is you got to be able to practice what you preach. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not perfect, but we when we fall short, we we are we we say, listen, I, I fell short. I'm sorry. I apologize. Mm -hmm. But kids are looking for that, and they need some consistency mm -hmm. yes. when it comes to that. And if there is no consistency, then you can do a lot of damage when Absolutely. it comes to that. And I think that's a very very powerful thing. And I think kids today are looking for the right role models, the right yes, mentors, that's, that's to, the where they can trust yeah. them. Because yeah. if we look at what, yeah. look at what's happened in terms of, and I, and I say this, and I do pray for restoration for our Catholic uh, uh, brothers and sisters and what's going on there. But if you look at what's happened there, look at how many kids have been damaged, yes. right? But people, and think about it, you're supposed to uh, represent the Lord and think about when you to, to betray someone's trust, just mm -hmm. think of the damage you do. Because mm -hmm. if they have a bad relationship with you, say your your earthly fathers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. how are you going to look at God the Father? See, uh, you, you think about boys, and it, it works like this as well. Um, God puts everybody here. And unfortunately, some dads walk out, some dads That's never true. came in. That's true. But still, that boy is still here. And now God is a friend of the friendless. He's the father to the fatherless. We know that about God. Even when Israel came out of Egypt and he blessed them, he said, listen, if a stranger come in, when you start picking your fruit from your tree, God says, don't take every uh, fruit off. Leave some for the wayfaring man. God has always looked out for those who do not have. That includes boys who do not have dads. God has always looked out for them. So he sent people into, into their lives. Now, uh, Rosina had a point. That is not just uh, training from a theoretical perspective. We're not just teaching God's word. Uh, you know, the Jews taught that the best teacher uh, is, is a threefold teacher. One is ethos, that's ethically. Uh, two was logos, that's content. And the other was pathos, that's passion. So we're not just teaching God's word because we know the scriptures, but we ourselves are men of integrity. Right. Not to say that we're perfect, as that's Mr. Exactly Fundy right. said. That's no, right. no, no, we're not that at all. But... We are men of integrity, and I promise you, for your son to be in our presence, the Holy Spirit would work through us and give your son reality. Because what, what young boys need, they need somebody they can touch. 
-hmm. not to read about in a book. They need somebody that they can touch. Every Saturday morning, they can touch us. They can hear us. They can feel us. And and that's what changes life. You think about Elijah. He took on Elisha. You think about Moses. He took on Joshua. You think about Paul. He took on Timothy. He took on Titus. And above all, you think about Jesus Christ. He took on 12 men. Jesus never wrote a book of his whole life. Those men learned from him. They watched him pray. And one day they asked the most powerful question besides who are thou? They asked Jesus this question. Master, can you teach us Mm -hmm. how to pray? Mm -hmm. Why? They saw this guy pray. They saw Mr. Fundy love his wife. They saw Franklin interact with his wife. They saw this. And one day these boys, your boys, would rise up and say, hey, can you teach me how to interact with my wife? Mm -hmm. I saw Mr. Fundy as as a kid at the all boys clinic, uh, 80, uh, 80, 75 price road, not, not his basement, <laughs> but he's going to help. Listen, listen, I saw how Mr. Fundy worked with his wife. He and his wife are just, I'll just tell you, they're really good friends. She's a coach. She trains, right? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Mm-hmm. A fitness instructor. A fitness instructor. So they watch how they interacted. They eat very well. These boys going to see that. I said, you know what? I want to be like Mr. Fundy. Not because they read about him in, in this book. No, no, no. They saw Mr. Fundy every Saturday morning. That's what's impactful. So that's why, you know, what I'm learning, uh, Rosina, is that teaching is more than talking. It's reaching. That's good. Mm-hmm. We're reaching. And we're reaching kids. We're reaching kids. We don't want to just teach. We want to reach. And how we do that? By proximity. We bring your children close to us. They observe how we act. They observe how we talk. And they sit back and say, you know what? This is what I want. And it's so unfortunate that there's no road model. Psalm 37, is it 23 or 37 says, mark the perfect man, uphold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. And that's what God wants. He wants your sons and daughters to behold. There must be somebody they can see. Not just read about. Yes, I love Dr. Martin Luther King. He's a great guy. I didn't meet him. I did never met him. But I promise you, had I met him, I would have a greater, a greater, a greater respect for him had I met him. See, what happens, our young boys, they don't have nobody. Their dads are gone. They don't have no hope. They said, so what? If I get shot, so I don't expect to live to get 20 anyway. So if I die 16, I think I'm okay. No, no, my friend. We have to put an end to that curse. And I really believe that what God is going to do, he's going to use ordinary people. And I consider myself to be a very ordinary guy. He's going to use ordinary people to make a difference in these extraordinary young men. Because the bottom line is this. Your son has a seed in him. It's a great seed. Unfortunately, he's in an environment, no offense, that's not watering the seed. We have to make sure that seed is cultivated, that it can germinate and it can sprout up and be what God wants it to be. Mm-hmm. That's what's missing. The boys have the seed. It's not about that because, see, I don't, I don't, I don't own the seed. No, neither does Mr. Fundy. God puts the seed in your child. But it's us that God brings along the way to help water the seed. And unfortunately, Rosina, Mr. Fundy, we got too many of our boys out here gifted inside mm-hmm. in prison, gifted inside dead, gifted inside suicidal, Gifted inside, no drive at all because somebody didn't pay attention to that seed. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're going to do in ABC. We're going to identify, we're going to uh, expand the seed. That's good. And I just want to say on that, there are a lot of fathers who are present in the home, but they're absent emotionally. Very good. And spiritually. Mm -hmm. So they need, so sometimes that can even be more damaging than a father who's just MIA, right? So we have to really think about Mm -hmm. that too. Or... Mm -hmm. I want my son to be there to be around to re, to re, to reinforce mm-hmm. to hear that mm-hmm. what it means to be a man of exactly. integrity right to be mm-hmm. able to see that so I think iron sharpens mm-hmm. iron mm-hmm. so it's okay yeah. you know so it's not just going to be for those mm-hmm. who don't have a father mm-hmm. it will be also for those whose father's there maybe he's not investing exactly. in the well-being of his exactly. child exactly. or he is and he still wants to be affirmed and he wants his children mm-hmm. to also be there to help other kids to say listen I love that my father did have a father. I love that. But that's good. He has God the Father, and he's he's a great that's father good. to me. And that's I good. want my son to say that's that good. to say I I, I want to be good. just like my my that's dad good. when I grow up. That's good. And I think that's a big and, thing. And and cross fertilization, meaning that I can take my son mm-hmm. and say, listen, there's an attribute that God gave Mr. Fundy that Franklin doesn't have. So I want my son to be exposed to Mr. Fundy's attributes and vice versa. See, you may be the best dad at home, but listen, you're not all of that. Don't, don't, don't be conceited now. I don't care how gifted you are. You're not enough for your son. That's so Good powerful. I think word. it's a great word. And when you think of the Christmas season that we're in, 
It's about incarnational ministry, good. right? Jesus didn't just Super. shout it. He didn't just Super. have a Super. angel. Very good. He could have. He could have just had an angel shout down, hey, you all, this Very is good. what you need to do down there. Very good. But he became incarnational, and he was present with us. Good. He wasn't an uh, absent father. He was there with his disciples. He was a man of integrity. Mm -hmm. He was invested yeah. in them emotionally. Yes. He loved them. Mm -hmm. He was there for them spiritually. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about this segment really has been all about the example, the power of example in That's mission good. and the power of example specifically with our children, especially with boys. And it's just so powerful. I love that you brought up that if you have a dad who is in the home, but he's not present with you in his mind. Yeah, yeah that was good. In his emotions, it can just be a void that feels just enormous and never ending. But to be able to then bring in what you said, mm -hmm. to cross pollinate, if mm -hmm. you have another dad that you can get him around by bringing your son to the clinic, mm -hmm. watching these videos, they're on YouTube, they're gonna be in our university, and just really appreciating, looking around you and saying, who are the godly men that mm -hmm. I know? I know their backstory. Mm -hmm. I know they're not hung mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And they will spend time with my son mm -hmm. and yeah. help develop mm -hmm. him into the man he was mm -hmm. supposed to be. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'm excited yeah, yeah. because as Jesus became incarnational, these gentlemen have made themselves available. Yeah. They're like, we're going to be incarnational. <laughs>